What's up YouTube? How y'all doing? We're here in 2022. New year, new beginnings, same us, <laughs> new profits. And on our channel, we mainly talk about our family as well as um, our journey to becoming a millionaire with our first passive income, our penny machine business that'll be followed up by several other streams. Hopefully this year we can acquire enough funds to buy more assets for, to support our passive income journey but that's what you'll learn so if you like that sort of content go ahead and like comment and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notifica notification so you don't ever miss an upload and with that we can just go and get straight into it this segment we're having the Q&A which means all the questions y'all been asking us in our comments we're gonna put it all in one video to answer it everything we know about everything from having, yep mm -hmm. everything we know about having a vending machine so far for the past how much 10 10 months. it'll be 12 in march yep okay so one of the questions we got a lot last year was where do we get our labels for our vending machine when we say labels we're talking about the price label as well as the like the drinks you know they have the little picture when we bought the vending machine and it came with it you know we used a couple of them but it basically has all this on there. All the options. All the options. This came with the vending machine. For the people we bought it, it was inside, literally inside the vending machine. Mm -hmm. Also came with the price level so that you could always switch them back and forth. Yeah, so these came with these labels right here. You know, they all go on different sizes. They come 55 cents, 50 cents. We got dollar, dollar five, 75 cents. 10 cents. But if you don't, if your vending machine person doesn't come with it, uh, I believe you can also order them off of Amazon, any labels you I'll want. I'll attach a link below. Yep. Any, any labels you need, they're all on Amazon. And that's, that's you know, it, it, it's, it's convenient. Yeah. And what we got them from the people who do our, who gave us our, or we bought our vending machine from. So those people normally provide it with you. And I, I did attach the link from where we bought our vending machine from. So if you guys want that, I'll re-attach that to this video as well. So do we pay the location that we have our vending machine in? Question, answer to that question is no, we do not. And the reason why is because we are uncontracted with that vending machine. Our profits don't include in them. They, it, we're, our, our vending machine is only there for the convenience of the workers and the employees. To make, it, it's only for convenience. So we keep all the funds to ourselves. We don't have to pay no other thing. Right. Uh, if you had to do other, some places might want it, but usually right. most cases vending machines, nah. So one of the things about if, if you're going to have to pay your location is if they're going to count you as one of their vendors. If you're going to be counted as a vendor, some will like a contract. We are not considered on board as their vendor. We're like we're individual people who walked in and asked them if they would like a new machine, basically, which isn't isn't normal. Um, and so most people may may need you to at least, you know, have something formal in writing. Um, if you're at an establishment that wants to take you on as a vendor, but you don't have to do that. In a lot of locations, you'll get away with it. You know, the best thing about not having a contract with it is that if it's not making enough sales, you can always bounce it out whenever you want to. Carry it. You, um, when you have a contract, a lot of people that I follow that are in the vending machine industry, they will have like if the business decides they no longer want the vending machine there, which can happen in our location, we're all in this agreement. So as long as they give us adequate notice, which for us is a month that they want it to be moved, we're OK with just going to go move it. Same with if we want to take it from them because it's not doing well enough they're okay with just having a month notice. But if you have a contract in place with the business, sometimes you can negotiate where if they just up and ask you to move it and you say your contract was for a year, they have to pay you out for whatever the remaining time is and whatever your vending machine would have yielded in profit. So the next question is, how do we know what snacks to put inside of our vending machine? Uh, basically, all depends on the location. So our location, we're dealing with older people other people, usually mostly adults, not too many little kids. So we have things, we have a very small healthy option. I would say just limit your healthy option to probably three, maybe five if you have more snacks. But you know, we have snacks and drinks and that's it's combo machine. So we have a small little healthy part and then mostly chips because a lot of people like chips, you know. You have some candy and some chocolate bars, but they don't sell well as chips. Chips is what sells the most. Mm -hmm. Now if you got somewhere like in a high school where kids are 
chocolate bar and eat up. Yep, love sweets, love getting cavities and things like that. They get them chips, get the snacks, get the the, the Jolly Ranchers, get anything that's in there that these kids would just love to munch on, you know what I'm saying? And whatever doesn't sell, we search it out. If we, we, we only know by experiences. We, there's times we lost money on some things, the other things yes. you had to raise prices, and other things you just have to switch out. So we're yeah. still learning as we go. Uh, another thing I want to just add to that is when we started um, the vending machine, like when we went and we was actually told that we could put ours there, because it did take a few days, we did walk around and ask everybody, you know, some of their choices oh, yeah, to good. put in there. That was initially, but a lot of things that they said that they wanted. They nope. didn't buy, they didn't purchase, and we lost a lot of money the first month when we shopped based off of what they told us they wanted in the machine. Because mm -hmm. mind you, we only went to the workers who were there that day. And those workers, um, one of them, she was like, oh, I want something healthy, I want something healthy. And none of the healthy stuff that we bought nope. sold the first month at all. So. They, they can say that all they want. I'm telling you, if it's a vending machine, healthy is not your where your money maker is. We nope. literally had snacks in there for seven months. And, they, and if they didn't last seven months, we would have just been out of a profit. They just sold. We just Finally, sold out of them. Finally had to replace so, them. Yeah, buy more. And that was the, those are the longest things that we had in the machine. Everything else will sell a lot faster than our healthy options. You got to remember, though, you're on a clock that gets what goes expired. All right? So chips expire within like two, three months. Sometimes you got to throw them out. They'll start to taste stale. So wherever you're selling, where you put them in the vending machine, Make sure you know that if it's going to expire soon, make sure people actually want it. When it comes to pastry items, those things expire in like two, three weeks. Way faster than so, every other item. Yep. So pastry items don't really sell too well, Miles. Not everyone likes uh, honey buns or oatmeal. But always try it. Sometimes they eat it. So. The oatmeal cream pies did well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honey buns didn't. They expired real quick. Really quick. But maybe, it'll do, <laughs> but maybe it'll do good at high school, so you never know. Yeah. Where do we get our LLC? Well, you got to go to your Secretary of State, whichever state you're in. They have different fees and different little, little, little small things, but they're all generally the same. Uh, I just use go to your, your Secretary of State, apply for the LLC, and do it. You can do things like Zen Business or, or other other little companies. It's up to you. They that they bundle in a bunch of other stuff. But when you just want strictly LLC, go go straight to your Secretary of State, pay that pay that amount. Whatever it is, it's different for every state. Wait a couple weeks, they'll send you to a form. They'll make sure there's no other names. You might change your name, you might not. Yes. Yeah, so you always gotta keep in mind of that. But you should be able to have your LLC within the first month. And just to follow up with that, uh, the next question that we got a lot was, do you have to wait for the state to approve your LLC name before you can apply for your EIN? And the answer is yes. Yes, you have to wait. You you've been through this when you didn't wait. What happened? All right, when I didn't wait, I uh, got my business credit or business account under my old name, and then boom, they said, you know what, this name changed. Take it. Yep, this ain't taken. So I had to all oh, crap. I got to redo my website. I got to redo my bank account. I got to redo yes. All in different names. So yeah. Get your LLC name approved first because if it's already taken you're going to do a lot of stuff he did mm -hmm. and then you're going to have to redo all of that stuff with the correct name that you're giving because when you go online they'll tell they'll like have you do option names so you want your first your most preferred name first your next preferred and your next preferred right. and those and all three of those um you know if they are all taken you know clearly they'll send you something back that says all of those names are taken but if one of them is available they'll give you the one you know in priority order that's available and for him that's what happened a so, little helpful hint a little helpful tip you know our our lc is snapbox 404 just add some numbers if you want to keep your name yes yep, it, add some numbers yep, 404 is our area code for georgia you know it's a very common area code when do we restock our machine i don't restock it ladies find you a man who's okay with going by yourself i restock my machine at least every two weeks my can last that long other than machines might be even more rapid than that I'm trying to get to the high school, which I have to restock here at least once a week. That's where the real money is. Yeah. But because these people, sometimes we have months where it's longer. We have Christmas just passed. So uh, during the Christmas season, New Year's, 
wasn't many appointments or doctors over there. You know what I'm saying? People don't really want that many appointments. Some people do though, because they also want to use their insurance. So it all depends. Uh, so when it's time of year, sometimes it's slower, sometimes it's longer. Right. Another question that we got was, do we regret not buying our machine brand new? And this was around the time that we posted our Penny Machine Broke Down video. So I'll let Nelson take that. Um, no, we don't. Because brand new vending machines are expensive. Really expensive. <laughs> really expensive. And, and although our vending machine didn't break down, it was a, thankfully it was a simple fix. It wasn't even as, uh, initially with the vending machine, it was with the location. So that's good. Our vending machine works pretty fine. And we had some problems in the beginning with getting a debit card and doing all that stuff. But that's with starting any business. You're always going to have some problems in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But I prefer to keep this used combo machine yes. and I, I will get another used machine, best believe. Yeah, ours is refurbished, so if they were broken down before they went to the place we purchased it from, they, they completely update them. Yeah. And then they guarantee it for 90 days, um, or they give you a 90 day warranty, so if anything happens on it, you know, of course they'll come out and they'll fix it. So during the time we was experiencing a lot of trouble, which we ultimately found out was more our card reader than our vending machine, and then when our vending machine was down, that was the location, like he said. So. No, I wouldn't purchase and I wouldn't recommend that. Your profit is already, you're already gonna start off in the hole when you purchase a vending machine. You don't wanna dig a deeper hole by getting a brand new vending machine when a refurbished one would work just as well. Just and it's well. almost like buying a car um, that's already had depreciation added. So if you purchase a three year old car, you'll save a lot more money than you will if you buy this year's model this year. Yep. like that. Don't be bougie. <laughs> What's the best location to place a vending machine? I'd say a high school is probably the most be ideal. Yes. Like, like that's, come on, that's kid galore. High school. Not not middle school, not not, not elementary school. You may be middle school, but you, some middle school make money, but I still say high school. He say, he say high school. I'm gonna go with hospitals, urgent cares, anything like that. Any place where it takes a long time any place where it takes a long high schools are really really they're they're like up here and i would say hospitals are too reason why i say hospitals is because you think how many times do you go to the hospital and you see their vending machines are empty or low and they re, some of those have to be refilled you know every other day or every couple of days versus every week a high school is the same exact way because how many kids don't like to eat their lunch yep. how many kids just because they got money, we'll spend money on a vending machine. It, it just, it, it, those two places are just like phenomenal for a vending machine. The uh, places people uh, put, a bit, put a vending machines in is like laundry mats and mm -hmm. barbershops. Now, you know, you can do that. I don't know how they work, but before you do that, make sure you look around what's the location. If you're at a laundry mat and there's a nice little food spot by there, some people might go to that food spot before they spend on vending machine snacks. Right. Still know. Or if they buy a gas station, it probably goes. Spend at a gas station before you do it and get right. more. Later, if you put it somewhere where there's going to be easy access to some other food that may be more affordable, your prices, no, your profit margins won't be like ours. Like, you, you can't do that. You've got to put it in a place that you're needed, you're yeah, necessary. They have no choice to. Yeah, they have, they have no other alternative. Like where ours is currently at, can you have to go at least five minutes in a drive before you'll get to the nearest food? at all and, and it might not even be what they want and the people who drive there they drive the people there to get the patients i guess it's their friend sister uncle right. and, their, and while they did that they're supposed to sit there and wait until their procedure is done and while they sit there and wait they get hungry and thirsty are we concerned about our vending machine getting vandalized no because ours is in a secure location it's in a nice neighborhood but it's also just in a spot where it's open from 3 a.m to 5 a.m or actually more like 8, 8 a.m. to 5 a.m., which is publicly open. Other people just had to use the car key again. But if you got a vending machine that's outside, yes. that's free game, man. Be, be worried <laughs> about that. If you have a vending machine, we we not concerned about ours personally, but we have a park near our house, and it's a very nice park, oh, you yeah, guys. Really and it's always it's really packed, good. always. Really there's always so many back. people there, and there's always something going on. And there's several vending machines. I want to say there's about six because it's a very large park. That one did get broken into. And like I said, it's a very nice park and it's very busy all day long. And yet it still got broken into. And we 
We don't know when that could have happened because it's also patrolled by the police. If you're gonna sit it outside or someplace where it's not gonna be camera monitored, that's your risk and that's your choice. Those vending machines do very well. So I imagine wherever vending machines they are, they were able to replace it and or, you know fix it rather quickly. Can't leave a vending machine anywhere. Uh, I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> just like we just said, don't leave it outside. Uh, leave it in a spot that you know for sure is secure and uh, might not get it. Leave it, I would say put it in a spot that you know locks up every night. You know what I'm saying? You know, but or someone with just a lot of cameras. Yeah, it's your property and it's it's too big of an investment to just throw away. I've I've had friends whose vending machine's been stolen. So you need to put it someplace where you can, you know, rest assured and feel trusted where it's at. Another reason why you can't place it just anywhere um, also is because you have to get permission from wherever you're placing it if it's on somebody else's property. You can't place your property on somebody else's property without asking them permission first. So no, you can't place it just anywhere and you wouldn't want to. You also want to place it in an area where it gets ample foot traffic on the day-to-day -day basis. And assume simple yes. conversions, very simple conversions. If this business sees 200 to 250 people a day, which is very low, um, and you're only going to guesstimate that 20% of the people that visit this establishment will take this or, or you know, you utilize the vending machine, then you're probably, that's where we are. That's where our numbers lie, somewhere at 20% conversion. So you're not going to sell to everybody that comes in, but assume numbers like that and place it somewhere where it'll have a higher number. I would say at least 200 visitors a day. Or, or more, a lot more. <laughs> the more people they have a day, like a high school where it has 500, 600 kids and then, you know, 500 staff members, you're you're lucky. That's a, a nice size amount of people. <laughs> Did we get a business loan to start our business? No, and I think we said that in our first video, but no, we did not and I would highly side against it. I don't recommend loans in general. <laughs> Not unless you're doing something like a, like a salon or something that's big, something that's major that's going to require you know over fifty thousand dollars to start up. This was less than five thousand dollars to start up, and I think we spent less than five thousand dollars the entire year. So I would definitely not recommend going to go get a loan for you know a single vending machine startup. That that. No. No way paying those No, no, no. Yeah, and in interest. It, it, no, no. I would say get business credit. That's going to be a lot different. There are a lot of perks. I think I listed that in our video, which I'll post wherever that damn thing is. Um, because I got, you know, very or no interest for 18 months on that business card. Um, so it, it's in my best interest to purchase that way. We, we business credit people over yes, here. Business credit. In case you don't know, you can max out on business credit cards. Yes. You know, so and it, is, it won't impact your personal credit score. Yes. So, so just keep that in mind. So what are the biggest lessons we learned in, since having a vending machine in 2021? Well, for me, one of the things that I learned was there was a lot that I did learn before owning a vending machine. And when I say that, I mean that. There's a lot of things you won't know unless you go through the school of hard knocks. You don't know that pastries won't sell virtually at all yes. in such a short amount of time. And there is some that will expire within two weeks. Didn't know that. That's what I learned. The, the, the race against expired food yeah. is real. It, mm -hmm. It's, it, I mean, we're counting that in taxes, you guys, because we lost so much product this year or last year just from being dumb, not knowing that it wouldn't sell. And it would be small things. Like we would get small amounts of food and it would still expire because we knew that it was going to expire, but we thought at least six would sell, you know, and then they wouldn't. So, you learn that was one of the biggest things that you're going to lose money you're going to lose product mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot you don't know and as you're learning those things you're going to probably relearn the same things over and over and over again and it's just trial and error especially when you're dealing with food we also have to learn how to price our product yes some things are just way too cheap and it's just you know you want you want to seem nice to people but no, you no. should go spend money. You, yeah. you, you're in this as a business. You gotta make money and you gotta make sure things cost a dollar. 
sometimes dollar twenty five in certain things. Yeah, but it depends. I mean, the prices of Kit Kat just went up. You get about Kit Kat. Yes. I, I don't remember what we spent on Kit Kat, but if we had spent that much for what it is today, we wouldn't have made no profit. I would have sell for at least two dollars to make a profit. Yes. And some things just aren't even worth. Purchasing. purchasing, yeah, because you know, with taxes and bringing over there and restocking it up, you either just break even or you come real short. Right. And it's just, it's, that's not working. Understanding how to make a profit and how to make your margins large enough where it's like you're making money. At first, we were not making money. I want to say for the first two months because our things were priced so low. We think we, we charged 50 cents for the chips because we were getting 50 bags for $15. And I was just like, you know, that doesn't make sense. No, we up that. It's a dollar now because we made our Snickers in the mini machine cost so much on the profit margin and then the drinks we went from charging 75 cents to a dollar even though our cost for our drinks hadn't changed they did this year you know inflation is hitting everybody so as a vending machine owner starting in 2022 understand you are going to pay more than what we paid for it last year because we're already seeing the effects nothing i learned is bring a wagon uh, my wife bought me a wagon to bring the vending machine in it's so helpful we've been carrying it in and being a man and, and I don't need no help and just carrying stuff in. Yeah, no, get that wagon. <laughs> Something else I'll also learn is make sure you get like some type of surge protector too. Uh, as you see the vending machine broke, in the, when our vending machine broke down video, uh, the outlet had broke, it busted. You know, it could have been just been a, really just an outlet with the building, but still just get a surge protector because you don't know how much energy your vending machine is putting off, especially if it's on 24-7. Mm -hmm. Just get that. Just get just to, to you know, it only costs like 20 bucks. So our goal for this year is we're gonna get in the second vending machine. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we get to high school. I'm trying to send some emails out to high schools, see if anyone needs a vending machine. Uh, hopefully schools don't shut down. And then I'll really suck. Oh my god. <laughs> We'll let y'all know how taxes look, how to tax a vending machine when the time comes. And we'll just let y'all know how this progress grow. We're only going to grow this more. We're going to make more money this year. Not make the same mistakes we did last year. And at the end of the day, no matter what, all the information we give you, your experience with a vending machine might be different. So just know that experience the first few months, learn mistakes. Mistakes are okay as long as you learn from them. So by the way, before we get to the last question at the recording of this video, we now have 589 subscribers. So welcome to the family, you guys. We definitely appreciate y'all. Welcome to our channel. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification. We appreciate you guys so, so much. We're this close to getting monetized. Just keep, um, just keep showing love. Please. Yeah, keep showing love. Keep watching the videos. And ask questions. Ask questions. Ask whatever question you need to ask. Clearly we like doing this. This is one of our favorite videos to have done for you guys. It did take time to go through and look at all of you guys' comments over the last 10 months, but it was worth it and we really appreciate all that, that interaction. Did we make a profit or a loss in our first year of being vending machine owners? Loss. We made a loss. Yeah. We made a nice loss, you guys. Um, we're not like overly upset about it because in business and this and this is just a little gem for you guys you can report a loss your first year and it could positively impact your taxes mm -hmm. okay so if we have said that we made all this money that would have negatively impacted our taxes you know you have more money as taxable income but because we took a nice size loss you guys and it was a nice size loss because again, we had so much expired product. Yes, right. Um, and you also deduct, you know, your car. We, I did have to purchase tires for our restock vehicle, mm -hmm. which because I'm not working out of the home, I work in the home currently, our vehicle was primarily used to restock our vending machine. So it's gonna go down and such and all of its expenses and last year we'll go into that so that's what i mean by we took a really nice size loss on our vending machine business you guys yep. but we're not gonna sweat it because you know a setback is just a what is it how does it go a setback is a setup for a comeback people okay yeah that's we're it go for and we're gonna make sure this year's gonna be better this, this year's gonna be better a lot more and just Experience as well. All right, well that thanks. was all the questions. You guys, uh, please like, subscribe, uh, keep commenting, keep asking questions. Okay, let us know how your vending machine is going. 
Yes, we love to hear about it. We've gotten so many people saying that they're starting their journey. It is the beginning of the year. We want everybody to get out there and hit the ground running this year. We started in March of last year. Here we are in January of the following year. So we're almost at our one year of being vending machine owners. We would love to see you guys make it this far and at least keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it going. We forgot to mention how many people called him. <laughs> Last year. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had a lot of calls too. You guys were blowing my man up. I was like, who's calling you from this area code? <laughs> yeah, so I got a lot of calls talking about what, what to do with the machine. Please, you know what I'm saying? You can always call me again. I don't mind. I don't mind getting calls. It actually excites us and motivates us, reminds us to know we can yeah. you have people listening. Yeah. And it makes us Not to fail. Yes. A lot of people are looking to us for the answer and we got to figure it out so we can give it to them. Yep. So Nobody again, called me. They don't call him. <laughs> yeah, right. My, so once again, like, subscribe, and um, comment, and we'll see you on the next one. Hit video. that bell notification so you don't ever miss an upload from us. And thanks for watching. Bye.